All right, all right. Welcome, everyone. My name is Chris Garrett. Thank you all for uh, attending today. Before I get started, um, if you guys can please mute your uh, devices just till the end of today's webinar, that will be very helpful. And then we'll go through questions at the end today. But uh, thank you all for uh, spending the time today to join me on today's webinar. And let me just make sure I've got perfect, got everything set up here. So we'll jump right in. Um, again, hello everyone. My name is Chris Garrett. I am Astrum's Chief Revenue Officer. I'll be leading our future webinar series um, that we'll be having every Wednesday. Um, since this is the first time I'm meeting with all of you and you're joining today, I'll give a little background on myself. Um, so I'm Astrum's Chief Revenue Officer, like I mentioned. I've been here with the company for about uh, a year and a half now. Well, I'm an Alpstone Prize. All right, sorry about that. I'm just muting a couple new entrants. Um, prior to working with Astrum, I've been in the real estate industry with several real estate technology companies, including founding one myself. Um, but enough about me, we are here for this webinar series. So we are doing a new webinar series to help agents like yourself um, stand out and win new listings. Each week, we're gonna be covering a different topic. Um, this week, we're gonna be covering branding. So as we go through today's webinar, I'll be teaching you how to build a brand and how that's gonna help you stand out when listings. And if you have questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. And at the end of today's webinar, we'll go through all those questions. Um, and um, sorry, just meeting a couple entrants here. All right, perfect. So first, let's begin today by reviewing what a brand is. A general definition of this is a business or marketing concept that helps people identify a particular company, product, or individual. Your brand is going to help you shape people's perceptions of you and your company or your team organization. As a real estate agent, you're going to want to be able, you're going to need to be able to set yourself apart from your competition because this is gonna to lead to new business. One of the most effective ways of differentiating yourself is to become known as the go-to expert among your target audience. In other words, this is positioning yourself as an authority in your particular area. Having an authority in your market means that when people think of real estate in your specific neighborhood or niche, they're gonna think of you, leading to your brand being top of mind and regularly recommended and sought after by your audience. Today, I'm gonna to be covering eight tried and true steps to help you guys build your brand in your specific area or market. If you like today's webinar, please let me know in the comments. And if you're interested in more, um, to learn more about this topic, we can develop you know, additional tools or uh, worksheets specifically for branding. So do let me know what you guys think today. So the first step out of the eight steps to build your brand is to determine your unique brand position. Your unique brand position is known as your unique selling point or the unique value proposition. It's what makes you different and determines why your audience chooses, to, chooses you versus the competition, why clients decide to work with you. In the simplest of terms, it's your secret sauce. Although it's rare for real estate businesses to be one of a kind and completely unique, of course, we each have characteristics that make us different from each other. And those specific differences are the ones that will resonate with your ideal client. An effective, unique brand position will help you carve out a space in what is already, as I'm sure all of you know, a very saturated market. Um, as well as on social media platforms, it's fantastic. So with that being said, I've created five questions that when you answer them, will give you a good understanding of what your unique brand position should and can be. I would recommend you use these questions to determine your brand position. So the first one is, what do you do? Such as, you know, what is your title? What services do you offer? And do you have any sort of specialty? Next is going to be how do you do it? 
defining what your focus area is and how you apply your skills to your work will be very helpful in determining your unique brand position. Next, you wanna identify whom you're doing this for. Uh, who would be your ideal client to work with? Or what is a specific niche you may work in um, are great ways to think about this. Next is what value do you create? What's a unique problem that you go about solving for your agents? Or I mean, for your clients, excuse me. <laughs> uh, and what makes you different? Why should someone pick you over the next guy or gal? What, what do you want to be known for? For example, obviously I'm here with Astrum 3D Tour companies. Maybe you wanna be known as that agent or broker that does 3D tours for every listing or specializes in the best marketing practices. So using these five questions is a really great way I'd recommend for you guys to determine your unique brand position. So after we've determined our unique branding position, we're gonna to wanna to identify our target market. If you wanna establish yourself as an authority in your market, you need to understand precisely who your audience is and communicate directly with them. The truth is, oh, give me a moment here. I'm gonna mute a couple new entrants. Again, if you're just joining us, please uh, mute yourself and we'll cover questions at the end here. So where was I? Um, you wanna establish yourself as an authority in your market. Um, the truth about it is that it's not enough to just market yourself to everyone and hope that you're gonna get clients. If you target everyone, in, in, essence, in essence, what you're doing is targeting no one, um, which makes converting prospects into clients very difficult. Your target market is gonna include a specific group of buyers and sellers who benefit most from your real estate services. The better you know and understand whom you're marketing to, the easier it is going to be to create a marketing plan that's going to attract your ideal client. You want to have a clear definition of your target market, and you're going to need to be able to identify what you do and whom you're going to do that for. So to determine your target market, you're going to want to determine the following things. I put together um, five components here that is going to help you with this. The first is your demographics. So demographics can be things such as what life stage you're at, you know, building families, upsizing, downsizing, you know, where do people live? Maybe it's first languages, maybe it's specific things they do for a living, demographics for that market. Next would be lifestyle. So what do they like to do? Um, what gets them excited? What's important to them? Um, do they have certain things in life that are status symbols? All of these can be great things that can be lumped into lifestyle. Next are going to be preferences, things, you know, maybe such as, you know, where they like to shop, um, what they like to read, maybe favorite websites, things of that nature. And the last two are going to be goals, you know, things maybe they're working towards or what are the real estate wants and needs. And finally, pain points. How do your services help them better than anyone else? So these are great ways to help identify your target market, which is gonna be very useful as you go about building a brand. So the third thing you're going to want to do in the effort of building a brand to help you stand out and win listings is to become an expert. And that all starts with making sure you're that expert in your market. So there are many agents in your area, I'm sure, trying to attract the exact same clients as you. So if you want to position yourself as the go-to agent in your market, you're going to need to make sure that you're doing everything you can to level up your skills and build knowledge that will help you stand out. Getting your license is just the beginning. To create a name for yourself, you need to know, you know your neighborhood, contracts, and really just the area inside and out. Being seen as that expert doesn't happen overnight, and it occurs through consistent um, and, and we'll call it intentional preparation. So you want to have a plan about this and know what you want to become the expert in. So a couple of key things that any agent um, is going to need to know is obviously 
the neighborhoods. You want to know the neighborhoods. You want to have your clients feel like you know the, sp the area and uh, that you're the best suited to help them because you know it the best. Um, so go out and learn about those neighborhoods if you haven't already. Um, next is your contracts. So what contracts are the most important in your market? How are you going to go about studying them? You know, make sure that you have the essentials down. Um, you know, your purchase, your sales agreements, the basics um, definitely is, is critical. And then the last one and the one I think I would focus on uh, myself more would be your specialty. Um, you know, there's advanced books, certifications, programs out there. You know, are you wanting to specialize in something uh, or develop a particular skill set? For example, since we're here with Astrum, most of you, I'm sure, have specialized in becoming um, very good at marketing your listings, obviously with 3D tours and many other tools available. Uh, so an example of this could be, obviously, what I mentioned is being that expert in marketing listings. So being the, the go-to individual for getting that listing marketed in a way that's going to help the, your clients sell it the fastest, sell it for the most, get the most uh, engagement. Um, so a great thing you can use is obviously Astrum's 3D Tours, where uh, when it's listed really well, that's going to help you generate more interest from other people that would like you to list their listings as well. So after you've become an expert, now we're going to start building that brand presence. So an expert doesn't be, becoming an expert doesn't do too much for you if you don't look like an expert, right? So this is why your brand presence is so important. You're going to want to establish a professional looking brand presence. And this is actually one of, in my mind, one of the most important investments you can make in your business. Because when it's done right, your branding is going to help you build recognition, establish trust, and secure credibility among your ideal clients. Designing a brand is fundamental to getting your real estate business off the ground, and it's imperative to building your business online, especially if you're you know, a unique uh, boutique brokerage or just going off on your own now. Um, your brand is rep representative of who you are and what you stand for. It's going to be your unique voice in the marketplace and your opportunity to create something that has a lasting impact. So a couple of the basics here, if you're with obviously a bigger brand, which maybe most of you are, this may not be as essential, but I like to go through them just in case. First is, you know, building that brand where you want to get the basics down, you know, the business, come up with a business name, determine your niche. If you're going to have a niche, um, identify your core values that you think is going to resonate and uh, write your brand story. Next, uh, design your brand, design your logo, uh, pick those brand colors, um, any branding elements, select those elements. You know, for example, maybe you're in luxury, so you have more luxurious things uh, included with your branding and create those marketing assets. And then the final thing is creating an experience. So know the benefits of your service and communicate those. So practice, for example, practicing your sales presentations, going in saying, hey, you know, for example, here's what I've done with a previous client and here's why I think it's going to work best for you and why you should choose working with me. For example, like I'm going to use a 3D tour. We're going to expand the buyer pool to new markets. And here's, you know, what's, what's worked well with others that's going to work well with you. Uh, other things you can do for creating a great experience would be identifying unique client gifts maybe. Um, and also a big one I don't want to forget is asking, asking for testimonials. So having others speak about your brand um, is, is fantastic as well. So now that we have uh, built that brand presence, let's talk about how you're going to market yourself online with that. So being a real estate agent in the digital age means staying on top of new online resources coming up and finding innovative ways to market yourself with potential clients and families, including building and maintaining your own digital footprint. In a saturated real estate market like we have right now, one of the best tools for your digital marketing toolbox is basically knowing how to use them and how to find finding ways to stand out and attract your ideal clients. So building a social media presence to 
is a great way of creating a marketing plan that's truly going to get you to stand out there. And one of those is starting with your agent profile. Um, all of you, I would assume, because you're here at my at Astrum's webinar, um, and our clients have a leg up on the competition through your ability to market listings. You guys, I assume, are going to be able are using 3D Tours to help stand out. And you guys have a leg up right now because 3D tours and specifically images of those tours stand out a lot more online uh, than you know, your typical 2D still imagery. So when you create great listing marketing, or, um, creating great listing marketing is gonna help you get new great listings. So I would think about 3D tours um, as your investment into getting the next listing. Yes, of course, it's fantastic for helping you sell your existing listing now, but obviously we're, we're all aware we're in a seller's market here. So it's even better helping you stand out and get that next listing because it's gonna help you showcase what you're able to do and what makes you unique. Um, it, so with that being said, let's break down a couple of the main components of marketing yourself online. Um, main big one is gonna be your social media. Um, so next week's topic, we're going to be diving into social media more. So I'm not going to go too in depth today on social media, but some of the basics will be including, um, identifying your core values, uh, those brand colors, designing your logos and including those marketing assets that we discussed previously on social media, on those social media accounts. Um, next will be creating professional profiles. So have a nice professional photo taken, write a nice professional biography about yourself and creating profiles in some of the top sites out there. So I would recommend if you're not on all these sites, I would recommend at least checking them out. Um, they'd be Zillow, Trulia, Realtor.com, uh, Home Snaps, great, Home Light, and uh, even Active Rain are great, great places to have a good profile. And finally, uh, website. Let's talk about personal websites. Uh, many of you, if you're with an established brand, you may already have this covered, but if you're not, having a personal website is a great touch. So if you haven't built one, there's a number of tools out there that help you build one. Um, so you can decide to either do it yourself or hire a pro for this, depending on you know what your budget is, how quickly you wanna do it, and maybe how confident you are in your skill set. Um, but uh, have a nice website about yourself, produce great content for that and have very professional photos, have a professional feel about that's um, uh, essential. So here we go, we're gonna get right into how to create valuable content for your brand. Traditional marketing is becoming less and less effective by the minute. Most successful marketers in this digital age will tell you that the key is, is content marketing. And the reason for that is because content marketing focuses on creating and distributing valuable, relevant, and consistent information that ends up attracting and converting your clearly defined audience. Now, I'll warn you, how, however, it's not just about sharing any type of content out there. There's so much content out there these days that, um, you know, platforms and, and people don't just want any sort of content. You want to establish content and create content that's extremely valuable to, you know, who you're trying to, to market to, as well as anytime you create content, have a specific goal in mind for that kind of content, what you want it to do. You want to establish, you know, you, you want to ensure that your content is solving a particular problem or highlights a specific interest you know your target audience has. Um, you really can't go wrong with that. So a great way I'd recommend going about determining what kind of content to create would be to first, I would decide on a few content themes you wanna focus on. So what are three to five topics that you think your target audience will care most about? And then once you've identified those, think how you can expand upon those. Um, expand upon maybe what's already written um, or maybe you know what you can bring to it from your unique perspective or lens. Um, then uh, decide what the objective is for your content. 
So what's the goal of your marketing and or what action are you looking for your audience to take? So depending on different platforms, you can have all sorts of different goals, um, but make sure that you create content for a reason. And decide where and how you will share your content. Online and offline channels uh, are, are perfect to use. Um, figure out what works best for you. We're gonna have a future webinar series. We'll dive more into you know, content creation and stuff like that and how to use different channels. But ensure that the content you create gets seen, really. And of course, I'd be remiss to say if I didn't recommend creating 3D tour content. Um, as an agent, 3D tours are still, you're still in the early minority right now creating this content, which nationwide we have a listings, about three to 5% of listings nationwide right now. Actually, I think it's 5%, it's correct. 5% of listings nationwide have 3D tours. So you guys are gonna have a leg up if you are creating 3D tours right now is because you're gonna get a lot more engagement online. So obviously you guys are aware we're partnered with Zillow and Realtor.com. Um, your tours are all displayed there, but Zillow specifically produces a lot of research and shares it with us as our partner. And Dillo, Zillow data shows that listings right now that are using 3D tours nationwide on average sell 30% faster because they're getting more engagement and on average they're selling for 9% more. So again, the biggest benefit, for example, talking about content and specifically 3D tours is it's gonna help you not only sell your existing listings, but increase your ability to find new listings. Um, creating a great listing is the best way to, to market yourself to get the next listing. So after you started, you know, sharing your content, a great way to establish this brand and cement your brand is to build an online community. Uh, this is another way that you're able to position yourself as an expert um, through this engaged online community that you establish. So you can accomplish this by creating an online group. Online groups are a great way to reach your target audience in a new way. Um, it's also a great way to build uh, relationships with prospects before they may need your service, um, which expanding that sphere of influence is a great way, even if they're not looking for your service immediately, they'll keep you top of mind. So a way to do this is you can establish yourself as this trusted peer, not just a real estate pro, and that will help keep you top of mind for when they are ready to, to make a move. Um, two great platforms I'm sure many of you guys are familiar with, I would recommend are Facebook and LinkedIn. There is another platform, I didn't add it to the slide. It's fairly new. It's called Clubhouse. That one is growing quite quickly. It's a mobile app. Um, it's basically uh, like a panel discussion app. So you can create your own group in there and invite people. Um, so it's very popular, it's up and coming. If you decide to join now, you'll definitely be one of the early people on that. But uh, I, myself, I'm based in the Bay here and that's where the company was founded. They're exploding um, and uh, they're gonna be very prominent. If you haven't heard of them yet, you will probably pretty soon here. So let's jump into you know, some of the things about building this community. A um, great thing to do is to look and keep some of these things in mind when you're going to go about building the community. So I would start with claiming a niche. Um, it's much easier to build a community when you have a niche versus it being much larger in general because you give a reason for people to join. So you can do, you can be very creative with this. You can come up with common passions, hobbies, you know, interests, goals, anything that you think is going to resonate with your target audience is a great place to start. Then, of course, pick a name. Um, uh, when you're go coming up with names, I would think of maybe including something that's maybe relevant to the community you're in or the neighborhood, or maybe a specific topic, you know, that the community is focused on if you're doing some niche, right? Um, write a description for that, for that community. And one thing with the description is include keywords, names, or phrases that you think your target audience might use when they're searching for groups to join. This will help you get found um, more easily. Then uh, once you have your community growing and, and established, 
uh, ensure that some of the content you produce has call to actions to it. So you want to be able to drive those members to your website or to an email list that you can then, you know, establish uh, them as a lead in the future. So think about those call to actions, of course, in your community. And finally, develop a post calendar. So figure out how often you're going to post and be, try to be consistent. That's, that's really key um, with these communities. And when I think of content, you really can do what you want, but I would think a good thing to do is do 70% of the content really local to your community and 30% of just general real estate information or information for your niche. And the final piece of building your brand is gonna be work, working on developing strategic partnerships. Your ability to create strategic partnerships is really gonna be essential for your long-term success. A strategic partner is an alliance of sorts with another individual or business. So when you surround yourself with a robust network, you're base, effectively increasing your credibility and perceived value that you can offer your clients. So your clients are gonna rely on your expertise and guidance and you're gonna be able to help them make the most informed decisions and work with the best uh, people in that industry, industry professionals, um, due to your relationships. And you can collaborate obviously in many different ways. Uh, some of these can be things like content creation, uh, maybe marketing efforts that you work with them, branding efforts, or even referrals. So when you think about developing strategic partnerships, I'd probably, keep the following in mind. First, determine who you want to target. What are maybe some of the companies in your, your local market, vendors or contractors that you'd wanna work with or that maybe your home owners would want to work with? Um, or even think of those outside of your agent or outside of your area if you're an agent that you may want to, to work with that may bring in um, a wider sphere of influence for your brand or, you know, new leads that way. Um, determine how you're going to reach out and connect with these people um, or these companies. Uh, what industry networks or groups do you think that they may have ties with or uh, what professions maybe you, depending on how COVID is, maybe they have, you know, in-person meetings or groups uh, or maybe they're Zoom now, um, but find a way to build re relationships with these in a meaningful way will go a long way for uh, having a long-term uh, relationship. And then determine, uh, once you've figured out who you wanna target, how you're gonna reach out to them, determine what you have to offer them. Think of ways that you can leverage the partnership to find win-win opportunities uh, for both parties. Um, that's definitely advantageous for everyone involved and it will make it much easier to establish these partnerships. All right, so this is how uh, you would go about building a brand that's gonna help you stand out and win listings in the market. Uh, showcase who you are and set yourself apart from that competition. For example, you can be known as that top agent who provides three tours for every listing and attracts new clients who are interested in working with agents that have a method to sell their home faster and for more money, even in a market like this. Um, good quality listings uh, and a strong brand are going to help you attract other listings and other clients in your market. Uh, even though we are in a seller's market with fewer listings, this method, uh, if you put the work in now, um, you're going to have clients now as well as, you know, once we move out of this, uh, this seller market, it'll help establish you even further after uh, we move through this. I'd like to thank you all for joining me this week on our first webinar series. This is being recorded. So for any of you that were not able to attend today um, or had to jump out early, we're gonna be adding this up on YouTube. We'll make a new channel for that, as well as I believe our team's gonna add this to Facebook. Uh, so you're able to rewatch this there. And um, if you haven't yet uh, joined our community on Facebook, I invite you to do so. We've got a great community established where you can learn and share with others. Um, and so definitely check that out. And I've added my email up here.
So again, we're going to be doing this webinar series every week, every Wednesday. And right now we're focused on helping you guys, you know, stand out and win listings. And each week we're doing a different topic. But if you guys have ideas for other things you'd like covered, reach out to me. Let me know. Love to chat with you. Um, even if it's not related to topics, uh, always feel free to reach out to me. Um, maybe your brokerage hasn't signed up uh, with her enterprise plan. So maybe you want to do that. Happy to help with that. But um, this has been uh, the webinar today on branding. And at this time, if you guys have questions, why don't you drop them in the chat here and I'll go through as many as I can here until we run out of time today. And um, we'll see how it goes. Let's start with chat. And then uh, depending on how many people are still here, we can open it so you guys can chat as well. We have more of a conversation here, but let's start leaving comments in the chat um, just as a courtesy here, because I'm not sure how many people are with us at the moment. So let me see here. I'm going to pull up the chat. Can I get a copy of the presentation and slides? Uh, great question uh happy to do so why don't we do this if you like uh joseph great question if you're still here why don't you drop an email in or, or private message me your email and i'll be happy to do so um if you'd like i can also email everyone here the presentation um but just have a couple people let me know if you're interested in that and uh, happy to do so what happens to businesses that decide that they don't need to do this and ignore the basic steps Great question here. Um, so a lot of times, you know, it's difficult to establish a brand when you don't have, you know, the basics down. And the reason for it, you know, you can be mixed message or you can try to target too broad of an audience, or you may come across not being authentic because you, you know, not flip flop, but maybe you have different messages that come across. And uh, authenticity is a big thing with the non younger generation looking to buy and work with individuals, especially as they think about looking for leads um, of who to work with through social media. Um, definitely, this is not a tried true, like you got to meet every single step to have a great brand. There's a lot of different ways to build a brand these days, but this will definitely get you set on the right foot. Um, and a lot of what I shared today is most of the basics needed for a brand. Um, so try it out and um, find what works for you, find what works for your market. Um, but uh, yeah, great question. I would recommend trying to have most of the basics done. All right, we got a couple people looking for the slides. If you're absolutely happy to, um, to provide this to you guys. So if you, again, if you want the slides, drop an email in for me in a direct message. Um, and I will make sure to get those emailed out to you guys here. Uh, let me uh, just give me a moment. I'm going to copy these emails down. So I'll make sure to get those out. All right. Well, that looks like all the chat conversations or messages. So if you guys want to unmute yourself, happy to have a conversation here. And uh, if anyone wants to chat more about this or general things here. Hi, this is Kareem. How are you? Uh, I'm doing well. How are you today? I'm great. This was a wonderful presentation. I myself have been in marketing for the last 18 years, and all of the steps you went over today is what I try to get my clients to do. Um, how has the Astra 3D presentation worked for clients as, can, as opposed to the Manaport system for our clients? Great question, yeah. So we get a lot of questions like that. Um, Matterport, I'm sure almost every one of you guys are familiar with them. That's a great company. Everyone seems to compare Astroom to Matterport. So I get a lot of stories like that with agents that come to us because their clients will talk about that. Um, and they may have used Matterport before coming to us. And so a lot of what we're seeing people talking about is um, typically with Matterport, when it comes to, I guess there's a couple key things for the branding. 
we'll talk, we'll keep it on Brandy. A couple of key things that I think are being taken away is a lot of people talk about the value that their clients see when the agent actually creates the tool. So with Matterport, obviously, most of those have been done per professionals. There's not as many agents out there creating that themselves. And so obviously, or not obvious, but there's been a shift in the industry with the sentiment of, you know, what will this agent do for me? You know, why, how are they going to earn this the commission? You know, um, NAR has been involved with some lawsuits and commissions have been, you know, a sticky point. So showing the value that they bring and the work that they're going to bring to your listing. Um, I've seen a lot of stories about that and clients being much more uh, happy with the end result, of course, the results, but also impressed with the agents that performs this. And they talk about getting more referrals from this because um, they actually, people start talking about that. From the side of the actual result with the branding um, for how it compares to Matterport versus Astrum, uh, very similarly, um, online, um, we're partnered and they're able to be displayed in all the same areas as Matterport. Um, a couple of key things that I've seen people talk about sticking out is they like being able to see the outside spaces, which Astrum can provide, which is different than Matterport. So a lot of people want to see this, you know, how does the outside of the property work? Maybe it's a rehab project for investors. Maybe it's a family that wants to see the backyard and, you know, dimensions of it for, for the kids, right? Um, so that's been a big thing that those kind of tours typically um, I've heard standing out uh, from, from Matterport online. I hope that answers your question. That's a great question. And I'm happy to, if you want to dig deeper in that, happy to chat further. Is there a way, um, I ordered the system. I got my Galaxy 21 uh, phone just for this. My system came. I was happy to use it. I went and have done two houses. Um, I did see the Astro Room logo in both of my final renderings. Does that make a difference for the customer seeing the Astro Room logo in it because I'm working for different brokerages? Um, what do you mean by does it make a difference? Like difference in how they perceive the tour or what? Yes. Okay. Um, I haven't heard of anything related to that um, from clients in any way. Have you heard something from, from yours? I mean, uh, that brings up this question. The company, the customer said, well, I thought you did this and I'm explaining to them I'm using the Astro Room uh, product in order to create this, as opposed to if I took the photos myself and hosted it on my own website, they only then see the company that I represents branding as opposed to Astro Rooms and then my brokerage branding. So I've got two companies showing different branding for one client. Oh, gotcha. I understand. Um, well, that is something that uh, we don't yet offer, you know, the ability to white label uh, the branding on the tours. Um, so I have heard, you know, a couple product requests come in for something like that. I'd have to get back to you on if the product team is doing anything scheduled on that. I'm, I don't get too involved with the product schedule here at Astro. Um, but from that standpoint, if you want to, you know, talk about that, you can talk about that they are just basically the technology that put together the images um, and created, you know, the, this virtual space and added the, the floor plans and whatnot. Um, I can go super technical into, you know, how we actually do that and the technology behind that, if you'd like to, if that's something that you think would be valuable to talk with those clients. I don't think, um, I'm not sure. I have done a lot of work and I do a lot of custom work myself. So I'm aware of white labeling, um, but I don't think it's important at the moment, but I did want to have an answer in case I do come across that question because I do work with a lot of customers. The only real question that I have was when I went to my last class, my last customer's house, it said in order to do the 3D plan, I needed to measure the distance that I was using my camera to the floor, but I did not see a place where I was supposed to put in those measurements. 
Gotcha. Okay. So sorry about the confusion on that. I can clear that up really quickly. So uh, when you go to check out and actually order, we are going to ask you what that measurement is. And we are actually going to be coming out with a new version of the kit that includes a little measuring tape for this purpose. And the reason we do this and the reason we ask for this is we do a calculation based on the height of the camera lens to the floor. And that is what allows us to determine and create accurate 2D floor plans for each uh, 3D tour. So we use mathematical calculation for that. Um, but we always add that reminder at the beginning because oftentimes people, uh, you know, it, it, unless you've done it a couple of times, you won't remember to, hey, I should check the, the height here. Okay. Um, but normally the height's about the same. I think the tripods are uh, standard height and I think it gives you the option for a standard height at checkout, but I, I forget. It's a good question. Okay, thank you. You're very welcome. Is there anyone else that uh, wants to unmute? Uh, happy to chat here. I believe we still got some time. Yes, I have a quick question related to the last uh, uh, person talking about the height. Uh, yeah, by the way, it, it is there when you when you check out, it tells you. Uh, my question is, I did not see that when I took my uh, picture. Uh, is there a difference you extend the height before you take it or just as this because I just added I did, I did not know you need to extend that is that a benefit to do that a more accurate or take a better picture um yeah so how I would suggest you set set up the tripod and, and go about this is fully extend all the legs to the maximum height um so we've designed the tripod in a way that uh, it's at the optimal height for um 3D tours, as well as in a way that can't really, um, there's only really one way to operate it. And so definitely extend that, measure it. And the first time you measure, I forget what the, the height is, I apologize, uh, but there's probably a standard height. And each time you do it, if you fully extend your legs, it's going to be the same height. If you put uh, well, in the not measurement. Just the leg. I am referring to the middle part that you extend. Uh, I extend both legs, you know, my come up without the extension of my phone is the 52 inches. But my question is in the middle, you can further extend uh, on the tripod in the middle. Do you want to extend that? Oh, gotcha. Yeah, the middle, my, right. my mistake. I understand right. what you're saying. Um, I would say it's case by case. So if you have a property that has maybe the living room has very tall furniture or plants or maybe a tall dining room and you need to have it higher, um, then I would suggest having it raised and then shoot every location at that property at that same height. Mm -hmm. In general, in most instances, I would say 80% of the time, you probably don't need to uh, heighten that section. You can just do the legs and it'll be about waist to shoulder height um, and you'll be in, in good hands there. Oh, great, because it turned out pretty good. I just took that, uh, even though it was my first uh, site. Uh, perfect. Yeah. Yeah, most people don't do not do that, and um, they don't need to unless there's certain situations they do. I do always recommend try to take all the photos at the same height, so it just it, it uh, flows a little bit nicer. Yeah, so. another question is that uh, you mentioned, I think, during your presentation about outside shot, you know, did pretty good, everything inside, I'm really happy with that. Uh, outside, I'm not sure, uh, outside in the front of the the house, for example, I tried to take a 360 so that my idea when I did that was then I have the neighborhood view also. But I really mm -hmm. need a good fun property page, right? Find when you put an MLS because that's the mm -hmm. first a still image. What are the best way to do that? So we, um, we just recently launched what is called, I think it was like two weeks ago, a 2D still enhancement feature. We, I don't know how much we've shared it with people or, or if you're aware, but uh, for the 2D still, I would say you've got a couple options. First, if you're having a professional photographer join to do 2D photos, uh, obviously that's an easy way to do that. Second is you can do it yourself. You basically take your phone off the tripod uh, put it from vertical to horizontal, put it back on your tripod, uh, move out of the Astro map, just take photos of the property. Um, and you can send it to us and we'll enhance it. So it looks like a professional taken image. 
you mentioned you had the S21, you said, which I think is the latest and greatest when it comes to cameras, cell phone uh, lenses that have progressed quite a bit the last couple of years. And so by sending it to us, you're going to have a professional photo. Um, it'll look fantastic on the outside. The third option for you would be to pull a screenshot from the 3D tour. So if you're going to do a 3D tour on the outside space, you can pull a screenshot. Now, this would probably be the last option because it may be a little curved on the edges because it is a 360 image. Right, right. Actually, I took uh, the steel using with the fish, but, but it's curved a little bit because it's uh, expanded. So it's not as a uh, regular uh, image. It, it's curved a gotcha. little bit. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my mistake. I forgot to mention, you take off the fish eye lens. So you take normal 2D photos, and we've got a great tutorial video. It just came out with that feature. You take off the fisheye lens, and you take those 2D photos, send it to us, and we'll do all the image enhancement and editing for it, which is really the biggest barrier for people creating the 2D images themselves. Cell phone cameras have gotten to the point where it's very tough to distinguish if you have good editing, uh, that versus a professional DSLR camera, and uh, we'll take care of the, the hard part, the editing for you. Yeah. So you have that option. Right. Uh, except a cell phone guy, at least to me, uh, my, my skill is not that good. But, uh, because it does not cover as good uh, if your property is wide. When you take a cell mm -hmm. phone, you have to walk really far to really cover that. That's why I put that fish eye there so it covers more. Uh, but, but as you said, you know, that, that the picture is not the same anymore because it's the fish eye expand that, you know, but anyway. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The edges are not going to be the right. same um, for that aspect. So yeah, I would probably recommend, you know, um, doing that without the fish eye lens on to get the best quality. Okay, yeah, fine. Next time then I, 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 I do that and then the, you guys can enhance that. Perfect. Really great. Yep, Thank absolutely. Yeah. Um, the one thing I did forget to mention is I believe the new feature since we had just released it, it only unlocks if you update your app. And also if you you have to have done at least one tour before for the feature and it'll be in the menu section, it's called 2D still enhancement. Um, so if you don't see it and you haven't done a tour yet, that's why. So make sure you create your first tour and then it will, will show up for you. And it's $1.25 per image. So it's, it's very affordable and uh, it looks exceptional. It's fantastic, so. All right, we have, give me one moment. I'm going to jump to, I hope I don't mispronounce this, Azneezy, I hope. I'm gonna unmute you now. Ask to unmute. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. What uh, can I help you with? Hi, sir, how are you? Doing excellent, how are you today? Yeah, thank you, sir, thank you. I wanna thank you for the platform. It's a lot time saving and I managed to acquire so many clients and thanks to you guys, Excellent. but thank you. So uh, I have a question we, which was asked by one of uh, our clients. I mean, like when you scan a room and you, you take those uh, 3D photos, I mean, like, can we scan the objects that are actually in a specific room and somehow manipulate the environment by removing, adding a sort of new objects? Is it is, is is that can be done with the current platform version or this this is something you are currently having the pipeline? So, are you referring to like three D staging? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, we do have the option for three D staging. So, what we can do is we can remove furniture from any indoor outdoor space and replace it with furniture or we can uh, add furniture in, uh, to an already empty space. So you have the option, maybe the house is cluttered, maybe you got kids at the house, you wanna just you know, make it presentable, you can do that. It's $35 per image. And it, we have only four styles you can choose from. So you can't customize it to be any, um, any furniture type or anything outside of those styles. And the reason we've chosen to do so is we've tried to make this as cost effective as possible. Um, so there are some pr pretty good styles there. Um, we do have that option at, at the end of checkout, you should see an option where you can select 3d staging. And then depending on the image, um, 
you can select uh, which image you'd like to have 3D staged and then select what style you'd like. I always recommend do the high impact areas. You don't have to 3D stage the entire property, just the high impact areas, you know, living room, maybe kitchen, maybe there's something specific in the backyard um, that gives someone the ability to visualize what living in that space could be like, so. Uh, I mean, yeah, thank you for the answer. I mean, like uh, some of our clients is an interior design engineer and uh, sometimes you need that kind of specific customization. I mean, like, is there is there a plan to implement sort of feature to or an API for developers so they can build up their 3D models and add them to the environment? Um, you know, we are, we haven't announced anything about it, but we are working on um, a new, I can't say too much, a new AI we're using artificial it's, it's top secret to then, a, huh? a 3D tour. Yeah, we are working <laughs> on something, something in the motion. I, I can't share too much yet. Um, but yes, we are working on a way that's actually specifically designed for interior designers to uh, AI stage. And the main thing we're trying to do is bring down that cost of staging through the use of artificial intelligence. And so we're very yeah. close with it. I don't know when it's coming out. Um, and I don't have the ability to share a lot more than that. <laughs> okay, um, I see. Yet. So, but yes, we are working on something. Okay, last but not least, uh, any plans to release a desktop version? A, a desktop version, you said? Yes. What, uh, so we do have the ability for you to log into your account on desktop. Your images are there after a tour and you can, um, you know, check your analytics or, or submit a request to order a tour. Um, is that what you mean? Um, I mean, like sometimes you work on, on offline where you don't have access to the internet. So basically you need to create a model before you host it on the servers. So you kind of show it to the clients how it's going to be, what, it, what it's going to look like before you actually oh, upload it to the server. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, we, we don't have that option uh, because each tour has to be hosted by our server for you guys to be able to view it. Um, so the only way for us to share it with you is if it's, on our server being hosted, unfortunately. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you for answering. You're questions. very welcome. Thank you. Is there anyone else that uh, would like to jump up and uh, and chat at all? Uh, sorry. Uh, where can I follow all the news? And uh, is do you publish it on the website itself, or uh, do you have do you announce it on Twitter or somewhere? Uh, yeah, so social media, Facebook, we announce uh, updates. We we'll also do mo mainly emails for those major updates. We do monthly newsletters with uh, those kind of updates. But definitely join our Facebook community, um, and uh, that's going to be your best bet. Besides, we'll directly email you guys um, the biggest updates. So Perfect. Thank you. You're very welcome. All right, I see we've got a couple chat questions here. Let me see. Is there a plan for a vendor? pre-made page for us to use true key vet, true key pages with content. So all we have to do is host it. Um, I haven't heard of anything from the product team. I would have to get back to you. It's a good question. I, I don't have a good answer for you. If you want to leave your, your email in there, um, I can get back to you on that question, but I, I unfortunately I don't have a, a good answer for you yet at this moment. All right, let's see here. Got your email. I'll, I'll have to follow up with 